big question mark. Um, we have seen that also in the countries of this area there were some dramatic developments like in Kyrgyzstan where there were two uprising in five years and two presidents were changed through popular uprising. So it's also a very dramatic development. So the issue of security and uh, stability is extremely important for this area. And uh, I think this is being watched very closely from all the world uh, capitals and also international organizations like uh, the Shanghai organization, uh, the NATO uh, and, and uh, United Nations. So I think it's an area which is to be really discussed and pay more attention to. With this, I will end my short introduction and I have the pleasure to give the floor to the president of Kyrgyzstan, Mrs. Rosa Atunbayeva. It's on, right? It's on. It's on. Uh, dear friends, uh, participants of this uh, roundtable on Central Asia, I was inspired uh, by the last statement of uh, Austrian uh, Foreign Minister that uh, uh, Central Asia is get more and more attention, and especially uh, uh, right after this uh, spring, uh, uh, the current, uh, the incumbent chairman of the uh, OSC, uh, uh, he, uh, the, the Lithuanian uh, foreign minister, he has announced that uh, uh, the attention of the OSC moved, uh, shifted uh, from the uh, Balkans uh, to Central Asia. And we do realize that uh, it is because of uh, um, resources of Central Asia, not just the mineral but human resources also. Uh, we are uh, literate parts of the world. Uh, we have uh, uh, finished the Soviet uh, period with uh, um, about 98-99% of literacy. Uh, the higher education uh, didn't uh, worsen uh, too much. Uh, we have a lot of new universities. Uh, we got a, a freedom to travel uh, and uh, uh, in spite of uh, all the uh, close new spaces after the collapse of the USSR, our people uh, go to uh, many countries around the world, they travel, they work, they learn about the world and uh, uh, certainly I must uh, point out that uh, mineral resources are uh, um, the most attractive uh, uh, what uh, world uh, has found uh, in our part of the world. Even uh, uh, such a small uh, example like uh, um, uh, electricity power, which uh, uh, for example Uzbekistan uh, fits uh, with uh, Afghanistan, Kabul, they sent uh, hydropower to Kabul. Uh, Kabul buy, uh, purchased this uh, uh, for nine cents uh, per kilowatt hour. If we uh, build our uh, transmission lines from Kyrgyzstan via Tajikistan and it will go to Afghanistan, all our neighboring countries, China, Pakistan, Afghanistan, each of them, they badly need today in quite a big amount hydropower. And uh, that's the richness which we have two countries, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan in this part of the world. We collect all the water in our highest mountains, which are about more than 7,000 meters above level of sea. And we feed with the water big areas, valleys of Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and they grow those three million tons of cotton which Uzbekistan sells on the world markets. So uh, the region is full of mineral resources. Even my country, which is uncomparable, for example, with Kazakhstan or Turkmenistan, we have uh, quite a serious deposits of gold and so uh, with the high prices on gold these days. Uh, uh, in Kyrgyzstan, uh, there is uh, under progress the gold mining with the Canadian company uh, American Canadian, in fact, company. We uh, this is the uh, 700 tons of gold, 
uh, around Issykul. We have other very attractive deposits of gold, and so we do believe that uh, with this high price on gold, we will become one day self-sufficient country. We have deposits of other very important minerals we will be self-sufficient regarding coal and uh, uh, again, hydropower energy, this is the most important. Two wings of our economy, hydro energy and mining, those are very important for my country. But when you in Europe are talking only about the mineral resources, please do not forget, in Central Asia, there are nations, very ancient people are living for centuries and centuries on this great Silk Road. My uh, nation, yes, has revolted over the last 10 years. Two presidents ran away from my country. The last uprising was April 7 of uh, 2010. Bakiev, uh, uh, that was the president's name, he has shot uh, 92 people from the windows of the White House. Nobody noticed what's uh, happened in Kyrgyzstan. In half a year time, it took place in Northern Africa, in Middle East. Slowly, European countries started to recognize that it is unacceptable, it is outrageous that those dictators, they shoot their nation. Nobody said uh, right, absolutely politically defined stuff about Kyrgyz events, even today. In the Ville, we have witnessed that Russian president joined to the G8, communicated that uh, Gaddafi is not right. It's happened in my country, April 7, 2010. Uh, my country, since that time, is on the track of democratic developments. We couldn't afford those two corrupt regimes. In Kyrgyzstan, straight after the 7th of April, we took the power. Provisional government has promised to conduct, uh, to, to introduce a new constitution in three months. In six months, introduce, uh, to conduct the parliamentary elections. We have done this. It is not a desert chaos which we witness now in other parts of the world. In three months, we have introduced a new constitution parliamentary, with the parliamentary governance. In half a year, the European community, uh, via OECD, via European Union's observers, they have uh, stated that was fair, open elections in Kyrgyzstan ever done. And uh, as a result, we have the parliament, we have the government, we are exercising today the parliamentary governance in my country. It's very difficult. It's not an easy uh, third power that uh, you should listen all the uh, opposition people, of the former Minister of Finance today is the leader of the Opposition Committee on Budget and Finance. He knows uh, what is my salary, how much government uh, uh, views uh, to, uh, to, to uh, fit uh, the, gov uh, the, the President, the Prime Minister and so on. But everything is open today. We have uh, open press, we have uh, strong civil society and this is again total opposite to those uh, places where all of us uh, watch with uh, quite uh, uh, concern. Uh, our 5,000 NGOs, they are very, such a, a very strong uh, people uh, on our political map. Uh, so, uh, mass media works uh, bravely to bring uh, to the light all the such a dark uh, business dealings of either they are MPs or they are the government members. So this is what we are doing. And uh, the most important was to fight corruption. Corruption, it is a serious disease for everyone. 
developed countries, developing countries, and especially for us, for fragile new countries. We'll celebrate 20 years of our independence this year. 20 years for Kyrgyzstan, it was quite a serious transition. We stopped somewhere in transition. We didn't achieve such a progress like in Kazakhstan, in Russia, but we don't have a right to live like today. We live among those dynamically developing countries like China, Russia, and Kazakhstan, and we do hope that one day we'll achieve certainly good uh, uh, success. Today, we are fighting against corruption. My country is a member of AITI program. Only Kyrgyzstan and Azerbaijan, we are the compliant countries. Uh, the mining companies in my country, they report to the public how much they pay to the budget, and 46 companies, they are learning uh, about uh, this uh, um, serious auditing. Uh, for the first time in 20 years, six big energy companies are under audit, international audit. USAID helps us to pay to the work for the work of those uh, companies. And we do hope that uh, uh, in those energy companies where the losses count up to 45%, would you imagine? Half of the energy produced by those energy companies has been stolen in the past. Today, they are coming down and uh, a lot of uh, measures and actions has been done. Uh, the losses today, uh, just about 29, 30%, and we do hope that uh, uh, those losses will decrease over the years. We want to put those AITI mechanism, this is transparency of, uh, in uh, mining mechanism, to put this in energy sector. And we are learning, we are doing uh, for many things uh, with this regard. Manas Transit Center, as you know, we have American base in Kyrgyzstan. And we want also to put mechanism of transparency there because we get uh, $60 million uh, for rent. We want to get more money to supply the fuel to, the, uh, to this uh, uh, transit center. And again, of, uh, very serious mechanism of transparency will be put over there. We have done some innovation. We have small budget of my country. We are really not very successful, economically successful developing country. But still, this is great importance to follow how efficiently ministries use this budget. We have uh, set, up the, we, we set up the public oversight boards in every ministry. They look at uh, what is the efficiency of the work at every ministry. In other words, I want to tell you that uh, regardless of those very uh, such a dramatic political events in my country, we look forward. Uh, uh, we want to escape uh, from this ashamed 164th place in transparency list, uh, international list. We want to uh, go up. We want uh, to uh, be among the civilized, uh, developed countries. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Otunbaeva, uh, for your very passionate and interesting talk. Um, we in Russia, we have been uh, following with a lot of um, compassion and interest uh, what was going on in Kyrgyzstan the last year. And uh, we are really very happy that uh, uh, now uh, the situation has calmed down. And uh, there is a strong hope also in Moscow that under your presidentship and in those new conditions, uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, will uh, finally get the kind of government it deserves. Uh, for, as you may know, we, we in Russia uh, feel in a quite special way towards uh, the former Soviet republics. We used to be one country. And um, this um, uh, approach, I think, is, is still very much there. We, we, don't, we don't feel worlds apart. We're, we rather feel that we're part of the, of the same world, of the same area, and uh, of the same history. So we wish you uh, a lot of success. 
Uh, we have uh, here on the panel two um, high representatives of the governments of Kazakhstan and um, Turkmenistan. I would like to present you Mr. Yerbol Orunbayev, who is the um, uh, Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Kazakhstan, and I would like to give him the floor. Kazakhstan is uh, the country which uh, uh, shows the highest rate of development in this area, and some would say uh, in, uh, in the whole of Eurasia. Uh, it has very successful economic reforms. Now, in Russia, we have started to study Kazakhstan economic reforms and to take a uh, kind of uh, uh, as an example for us. Uh, so, please, you have the floor. The only thing I would like all the speakers to stick to maximum seven minutes so that we, we have the uh, opportunity later to take some questions from the floor. Please, Mr. Orenberg. Thank you very much. I would like to be uh, short. Uh, uh, going back to the uh, topic you raised, uh, what uh, are Central Asian strategies in today's new reality? I think to uh, answer uh, this uh, very interesting uh, uh, question, first we should identify uh, on what stage and where uh, Central Asia uh, uh, is now. Uh, what uh, challenges uh, uh, this region is facing and what issues are prevailing in this region. Uh, and I would like to uh, approach this uh, topic uh, through economic perspective. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, Central Asian uh, region is far and away from the major economic uh, centers uh, of the world. Uh, we know that there are three big centers, North America, uh, uh, Europe, and uh, Southeast Asia. And now, uh, and compared to these centers, uh, this region is uh, in a remote uh, area. Uh, uh, it's quite unstable and very uh, volatile region, uh, given uh, uh, proximity of Afghanistan, which is uh, the world uh, issue, not only this region. And this region is very uh, uh, neighbor to Afghanistan. Uh, with all uh, uh, issues coming from uh, this country, especially uh, terrorism and uh, dra uh, drug trafficking. Uh, it's different level of the development of the countries in the region. If we uh, take uh, five uh, Central Asian countries, uh, it's uh, a great uh, uh, variety in, in terms of the development. For example, uh, uh, GDP per capita uh, 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 in uh, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan is about 1,000, I tell you roughly. Uh, in Turkmenistan uh, uh, and in Kazakhstan it's uh, more bigger. In Kazakhstan it's about 9,000. In Turkmenistan it's about uh, 6,000. Uh, so this is a big gap in the development. Uh, uh, there is a, a, a big problem of the poverty which is during uh, the collapse, after the collapse uh, of the Soviet Union and after the, uh, this 20 years transition period somehow prevailed and not all, all countries of the region managed successfully to address the social issue of poverty and uh, even distribution of their wealth. Very low uh, value added uh, uh, economic activities uh, which end up in very uh, 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 not very diversified export of these countries, uh, mainly it's a commodity type, uh, as the president of Kyrgyzstan mentioned, it's uh, some kind of the raw extracting commodity or very, or very uh, low added value such as cotton or wheat or other type of the commodities. Uh, not very developed, uh, uh, I would say uh, developed human capital, but uh, some, in some way obsolete. A lot of the modernization is needed to bring it to the world uh, uh, standards. Uh, based on these issues, and I raised just uh, some of them, which I think is uh, very important, but I am pretty sure that there are many others of them, uh, especially in the context of uh, each country in the region, I think uh, uh, it's possible to answer the question, what will be the best strategy for the Central Asia? I would say that the major goal of all Central Asian uh, uh, republics, countries, should be a uh, uh, goal of the integration to the global economy. Uh, and it should be two-dimensional. Uh, first, it should be integration in the region, which is very important because size of the economy matters in this respect for the in investors and for the uh, attracting foreign direct investments and promotion investments, and integration to the uh, world economy, uh, especially 
uh, 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 given that the, such a big uh, uh, market of the Russian Federation and the China is a, a, a neighbors of this region and uh, potentially they are uh, uh, very fast growing economies. Uh, in this regard, infrastructure development, especially transport can, and different types of the connectivity is very important and crucial for the integration. Uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, together with our uh, neighboring countries, we're implementing a very big project. Uh, it's highway uh, from the West China to the West Europe. And the length of this highway is about 8,000 kilometers. And Kazakhstan covers about 4,000 uh, kilometers of this uh, highway. World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and other multinationals financing. It's one of the biggest project now currently uh, uh, implemented uh, in, in the world. It, it led uh, to bring uh, goods from the uh, uh, east part of the China to west part of the Europe in 10 days compared to the 40 days by sea. Uh, so it's very efficient, at least in terms of the time, and uh, we will try to do everything to make it efficient in terms of the cost of the delivery. Uh, human development is also a very important issue, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, moderator raised this issue, uh, and uh, especially uh, in terms of the uh, vocational and training and, and technical education, modernization of the tertiary education and uh, 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 preschool uh, education is also very important. Uh, and finally, I think uh, what is important for all countries of the region is a very well developed and clear uh, strategy uh, uh, of the uh, promotion of the investments. I think this is very, very important because uh, investments uh, spur development of the economy, and then uh, governments, it's role of the government to make uh, sure that this is uh, uh, development uh, uh, evenly distributed uh, in the society. Thank you, Mr. Rambayev. Um, I think it enlarges our uh, image of uh, the strategies you are discussing in order to be successful in your country, in your area. Now I have the pleasure to give the floor uh, to Mr. Japarov, who is deputy Prime Minister of the Government of Turkmenistan. Thank you very much. Chair, Excellencies, fellow participants, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to greet you on behalf of Turkmenistan and thank you for the opportunity to speak to such a high-level international forum. May also thank the organizers for the excellent job they have done in putting this event together and may also wish all fellow participants all the best during the event. We are sure that uh, given the representative nature of this Vienna Forum, judging by those in attendance, there should be considerable prospects and opportunities for business like exchange of views. Ladies and gentlemen, current day Turkmenistan is an independent, neutral and dynamically developing country which has a tremendous amount of natural wealth and a fairly developed production, productive center, as well as infrastructure and human potential. Given the far-sighted reform policies that have been instituted by the president of Turkmenistan, we have managed to considerably step up the part that we play in international affairs. We've extended the bounds of cooperation with other countries of the world. The dynamic developments in our country, in the economy in particular, has been determined in large part by the fact that there has been a balance struck between market mechanisms and a very strong government regulation as well as targeted programming and we pursue large-scale programs. Some of the main programs that we are pursuing are for social and economic development that would range from 2011 to 2030. Besides that, there are other programs in the works as well, for example, 
Social Development Program. Program for industrial development. There's another one for industrial production, and then there are programs that are targeting more specific regional development as well as sectoral programs. All of this has enabled us to. Строительство в Туркменистане сейчас строительная отрасль занимает второе второе место после промышленности и его доля в ВВП значительно увеличилась. Если говорить о развитии отраслей экономики Туркменистана, конечно, Туркменистан в первую очередь это богатейшая ресурсная страна, где which country. We cover all our own needs in oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we export in terms of oil and gas and electric power. In fact, we Строим новые additionally, мощности по uh, производству электроэнергии, так и по увеличению uh, объемов поставок электроэнергии uh, в Афганистан. Конечно, реализация этого проекта – это, в первую очередь, направлена на поддержку этой страны. Мы продаем электроэнергию в Афганистан на пальготной цене, она немного более двух центов. Также у нас на сегодняшний день addition, после, или, скажем так, разгар экономического кризиса, мирового финансового кризиса, Туркменистан более активизировал its свои возможности по диверсификации экспортных поставок природного газа. На сегодняшний день были введены в строй. Кроме того, что мы осуществляем поставки в северном направлении, были дополнительные строи, такие газопроводы, как Туркменистан, Казахстан, Китай. Вторая ветка была проложена Иран. Сейчас очень активно ведется строительство, подготовка проекта Туркменистан, Пакистан, Индия. Большую помощь нашему соседнему государству, мы предлагаем, что все эти проекты помогут экономически развиться Афганистана и, конечно, это оставит свой след и поможет установиться миру в этом регионе. Что касается экономической ситуации, то даже в кризисный период, в самый разгар кризиса в 2009 году, имел положительную динамику развития, рост ВВП составил 6,1%, в 2010 эта цифра составила 9,2%, а текущий год показывает, что темпы развития будут очень высокие, порядка около 14% ВВП, и буквально завершившаяся вчера миссия МВФ подтверждает эти высокие темпы Бюджет в последние годы сводится профицитно. Туркменистан имеет стабильно положительный внешний торговый баланс. И значительные поступления бюджет, конечно, помогают нам увеличить запасы как в международной резерве, так и пополнять стабилизационный фонд, который был в 2009 году. Если говорить уже о государственных расходах, то хотел бы отметить, что львиная доля, 75% средств государственного бюджета, конечно, направляется на программы социальной сферы. Для финансирования как социальной сферы, так и осуществления капитальных вложений в эту сферу. Нейтральный статус и политическая стабильность Туркменистана на сегодняшний день очень являются привлекательными как для инвесторов, так и позволяют нам расширить взаимовыгодные внешние экономические связи. И перспективным сотрудничеством, перспективным направлением сотрудничества между Туркменистаном и странами Евросоюза 
Евросоюза и Дунайского региона могут стать такие сферы, как энергетика, химическая и легкая пищевая промышленность, фармацевтика, машиностроение, приборостроение, Конечно, в какой-то городе срок сейчас невозможно сказать об экономике, о ее возможностях и о возможностях развития, о потенциале как в Центральной Азиатском регионе, но Туркменистан и в дальнейшем открыт для сотрудничества, и я хотел бы And may I just say that I would wish all of the participants here at the World Economic Forum every success in what they pursue. Thank you. I think it was very good to hear that your country is doing so well. 14 percent of rise of GNP per year. It's a very, very high figure. I think only Singapore is doing better. This year it will be 15.5% in Singapore. Well, uh, now uh, I think we, we have heard the speakers from the um, Central Asian countries now. I would like to give the floor to speakers uh, who um, are also part of, of the picture because they work in this area, uh, but they have an experience of uh, also of um, people who work from with Central Asia from the outside world. And um, I would like to give first the floor to Pierre Morel a special representative of the EU for Central Asia. I only have one wish. For the last three speakers, I would like to limit you to five minutes. So <laughs> that uh, your remarks, uh, and I hope that we'll have a bit of time at the very end of the session. Please, Pierre. Uh, merci, Alexis, uh, de cette opportunité pour for une excellente uh, réunion. Uh, je concentrerai mes remarques uh, sur trois aspects uh, et il faut aller à l'essentiel en, en cinq minutes. D'abord, sur les risques right émergents. First, uh, je crois qu'il faut souligner, on l'a évoqué déjà, le problème, c'est le voisinage de l'Afghanistan avec l'incertitude qu'il entretient. The, uh, right, uh, uh, il ne faut pas être nécessairement pessimiste, uh, uh, mais uh, cela oblige à faire très attention. La région de l'Asie centrale est stable, mais elle est fragile. Et je crois que c'est là qui est euh, une bonne partie du problème en termes de sécurité pour qu'on aussi s'interroger sur les risques émergents. Et là, très clairement, le risque principal, c'est le trafic de drogue. On en parle, euh, mais on ne mesure pas encore assez le risque et les conséquences que cela comporte. Ici à Vienne, vous avez une excellente organisation qui est l'Organisation des Nations Unies contre la drogue et le crime. Je cite ces chiffres. Euh, par la route du Nord passent environ chaque année 95 tonnes d'héroïne. Une dizaine environ est consommée sur place. Le reste va principalement vers la Russie et l'agence russe elle-même euh, constate que le nombre de morts par euh, de drogue est de l'ordre de 30 000 par an. On a un véritable fléau régional et super-régional qui atteint aussi l'Europe. Et donc, les moyens sont encore insuffisants. Je cite un autre chiffre. Il y avait euh, en 2000 1640 cas déclarés de sida en Asie centrale, il y en a aujourd'hui environ 35 000, 2009. Ce sont les chiffres de l'ONUDC. Euh, malheureusement, pardon, il faut avoir la bonne distance. Excusez-moi. Euh, malheureusement, il faut évoquer cette situation, non pas pour dire que c'est catastrophique, mais pour justement trouver la bonne réponse. L'une des réponses sur lesquelles travaille l'Union européenne, c'est le contrôle des frontières, la ce que nous appelons la gestion intégrée des frontières, c'est-à-dire amener ces pays jeunes, encore avec une expérience gouvernementale, en, en consolidation, à bien intégrer les différentes dimensions de la gestion des frontières. Il y a là, euh, par rapport aux menaces classiques, un enjeu majeur. Et on peut bien travailler ensemble, on peut travailler plus ensemble. Voilà le, le premier élément que je voulais, de façon simplifiée, signaler pour la sécurité. Le deuxième aspect, c'est la transition politique, les transitions en cours dans ces sociétés. Euh, nous avons vu 
avec les événements qu'a évoqué la présidente Toumbaïeva uh, uh, à travers toute la région Afrique du Nord et d'Orient, que la corruption systématique conduite à la révolution. C'est de la mécanique politique élémentaire. To, uh, et donc, uh, le débat public so est un des moyens et le recours à l'état de droit est un des moyens de réduire la tolérance de la corruption. Ça n'est pas pour dire que c'est seulement dans cette région. Regardez les entreprises internationales. Maintenant, elles ont un chief ethic officer. Ceci n'existait pas il y a 10 ans. Donc c'est pour tout le monde. Mais simplement dans les états jeunes, il y en a une menace majeure. Et donc, travailler sur l'état de de droit. Ça n'est pas arrivé pour dire, voilà le modèle européen, faites comme nous. Non, pour la stabilité de ces pays, avec leur héritage et leur histoire, il est évident qu'il faut consolider l'État de droit. Et là-dessus, nous avons, avec l'expérience du Kyrgyzstan depuis un an, qui a évoqué la présidente Tumbaïva, une leçon remarquable. Il n'y a pas de modèle tout fait. Le Kyrgyzstan fait face à tous les défis en même temps. Il le fait, il fait face à et je veux rendre hommage au, au, au travail fait par la présidente Oumbaïva et toute son équipe dans des conditions extraordinairement tendues, même dramatiques et même tragiques, mais le cap est tenu. Et il n'y a pas de modèle à importer, ce qu'il faut, c'est être auprès d'eux, accompagnés, appuyés régulièrement. Pas une fois pour toutes, en venant de temps en temps, mais en venant assidûment. Voilà quelques leçons que l'on peut tirer. Le dernier point que je voudrais souligner, c'est la coopération régionale. Ces cinq États d'Asie centrale, encore une fois, retrouvent leur identité, la reconstruisent, la réaménagent après une longue histoire et des transitions complexes. Et évidemment, chacun veut avoir sa logique propre. Nous venons l'entendre à propos aussi du Kazakhstan et du Turkmenistan. Il en va de même pour l'Ouzbékistan et le Tadjikistan. Et c'est normal. Chacun veut définir sa voie. Mais en même temps, les défis, et j'en ai évoqué quelques-uns, ne trouveront de solution que par la coopération régionale. C'est en progrès dans le domaine de l'énergie, cela a été évoqué, le, euh, le, 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 le gazoduc Chine-Turkménistan, c'est déjà de la coopération régionale avec l'Ouzbékistan et le Kazakhstan. Dans l'avenir proche, nous en sommes convaincus, le transcaspien, depuis le Turkménistan vers l'Europe, sera une autre forme de coopération régionale. Cela avance moins facilement dans le domaine de l'hydroélectricité que l'on a évoqué, parce que la question de l'eau est sans doute l'une des plus difficiles. Mais là aussi, il est possible de travailler dans le domaine de l'eau par étapes. L'expérience de la mer d'Arabe oblige et va obliger tous les pays d'Asie centrale à mieux travailler ensemble. Et je crois que, au delà de la sécurité dont j'ai parlé, au-delà des enjeux énergétiques, l'exemple des transports qu'a donné M. Rubaïev, 10 jours de la Chine à l'Europe par la, la voie terrestre au lieu de 40 jours par les navires, voilà un formidable défi pour nous tous. Pour reprendre de Lisbonne à Vladivostok, reprendre l'image qui a été donnée, je voudrais souligner également que dans le domaine de l'éducation, il y a sûrement beaucoup de choses à faire. L'Asie centrale est une région qui petit à petit construit son modèle. Ça sera le sien, ça ne sera pas le nôtre de l'extérieur. Mais nous pouvons et nous devons apporter notre contribution. Merci. Merci Pierre, c'était vraiment un plaisir de vous écouter. Et maintenant, je donne Report to Mr. Victor Chu, who is the chairman of the Eastern Investment Group from Hong Kong, and who will share with us his experience in uh, working in Central Asia and making investments in Central Asia. Please, Mr. Chu. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I, I should say that First Eastern is a big investor in China. We have invested over the last 25 years in 150 uh, investments, including 10 financial institutions. Many of my investee companies are keenly interested in uh, Central Asia uh, regions, uh, some of which are already doing business and lending into the region. So, of course, as a region, this is something of enormous interest to us. But I thought I should pick up from uh, the last distinguished speaker's um, appeal for regional cooperation and indeed regional partnership, because I think these are the two keys which will allow the Central Asian economies to accelerate the pace of the reform and development. If uh, the BRICS countries were the darling of the investment world in the last 20 years, I have no doubt that despite 
the risk and the security concern that there's every chance of Central Asia of, beginning, of becoming the darling of the investment world in the next 20 years. Because the, fundamental, the fundamentals, the potentials are there, and they can also learn from the experience how China, Russia, and indeed other eco uh, emerging economies in the last 20 years have set about um, their particular reform program. As an investor, I would like to see there are um, a clarity in regulations, particularly for foreign investments. I would like to see that short of uh, a, a full development of rule of law, as we understand them in Europe, that government takes the lead in helping a foreign investor in setting up, in uh, roading out, and also in terms of run, when we run into trouble, and we always run into trouble, then government plays a part in helping us to find a satisfactory solution. I think in terms of transparency and development of the rule of law, this is a long-term process. We, don't, we can't expect um, a newly uh, emerging economy uh, to achieve Rome uh, in one day. But so long as there is a positive and an ongoing commitment from the host government to do that, I think investors will, be, will find it very attractive. I also like to uh, uh, give a plug to the Hong Kong and the Vienna uh, capital market for purposes of the Central Asia uh, economies. I think the Hong Kong market sits in the middle of the um, emerging Chinese uh, market. We have been very successful in bringing Chinese companies onto the uh, Hong Kong exchange. I was instrumental in developing this uh, scheme called X-Shares uh, in 1991. And since 1993, we have uh, listed more than 100 uh, Chinese companies, um, fundamentally different from the Western companies that we know in those days. And we have raised over 200 billion in that process. And more recently, we have started listing uh, Russian companies on the Hong Kong market and other, yeah, from other emerging and frontier markets as well. So certainly, Hong Kong market welcomes and embrace the Central Asian uh, companies, com investors coming here. And Vienna, of course, being the centre uh, uh, in this part of the world, will also have a very useful role to play. So maybe Hong Kong and Vienna really should think about how to synergize this particular potential, uh, forming investment funds listed in both Vienna and Hong Kong to tap new capital. The last point I want to uh, mention is the offshore RMB market that has been developed in Hong Kong. We have huge liquidity in that market, but there's very little product. It's a very cheap way of financing for companies from Central Asia region who are already doing business in China. Um, the interest rate is extremely low, and that, if you're already setting trade investment in China in RMB, that would be a very useful uh, market to, to, to take a look. So I will restrict myself in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chu. Uh, uh, I think you just confirmed the impression we also get uh, in, in Moscow that China is more and more interested in this area and you find a lot of Chinese businessmen, a lot of Chinese investors in uh, the capitals of those republics, but um, Russia is also present and uh, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Finneganov who is the chairman of the Eurasian Development Bank. Mr. Finneganov, please. Thank you very much. Just to comment briefly about the sort of integration that is occurring in this Central Asian region. We are a development institute that was set up to foster cooperation and integration in this area. And of course, we're closely following the economic policies that are emerging. It's clear to us, as it may be to other participants, that we're talking about a significant area at a large scale, and this should prove attractive to investors more so than at the uh, closed markets, in as much as the objective economic realities are that there are new markets opening new uh, prospects of cooperation. On, in Central Asia, the first uh, project that we set up in the CIS was designed to preserve some of these integration ties that had historically arisen in the region. And I'm not talking just about the Soviet area, but I'm talking all the way back in the time of the Great Silk Road. Something was uh, pulled off, something emerged from this, and we have seen that there, are, there is a basis that we can build 
build on uh, that this has been able to accommodate a tremendous traffic in uh, goods. We've also seen electro generation schemes that feed into the market and that too is a contributing factor although I have to admit that there is a lot to do by way of limiting losses so other integration projects for the same region are similarly being pursued uh, President Nazarbayev uh, has alluded to this he will be heading the Central Asian uh, and Economic, Economic Union Initiative and will be pursuing consultations with the Shanghai cooperation organization where they're also talking about how to ensure interactions throughout the region. All of this to assist in having uh, cooperation and integration emerge as a result of policy. I don't see the region developing without this. What has proved successful so far has been, of course, first of all, the customs union, which in, involves our country, the Russian Federation and Kazakhstan and Belarus. I hear that Kyrgyzstan is also interested possibly in joining. And that does indicate that this customs union might even extend further. In the region. I'd like to say that, of course, there are serious challenges to an economic development in the region. There has to be regional integration and innovation to further develop cooperation and integration. The main thing is to maintain and further develop the regional infrastructure. Now, that's not only with regard to power grids or power transport or regulations. The ability to set up industrial clusters in uh, agro-business, in the mining and energy sectors, which could lend a further boost to develop in each and every country in the region, not to mention the region as a whole. So that is why we as a development bank are working in this area, and we're hoping that investors will back us. Indeed, it's on their behalf that we were set up in order to facilitate business in the region. I can only suggest that we make further headway along these lines and that we continue to focus on cooperation. Mr. Finnegan, we have uh, three minutes left, actually, so uh, we can take either two questions from the floor, if the answers will be by one minute, or one question from the floor. Please, who would like to or any considerations, maybe? Yes, please, welcome. Uh, present yourself, please. We need a microphone, please. Please use the micro, please. Sorry, I'm um, Paul Austin from uh, Devon Contractor. We're a Middle East based business from the United Arab Emirates. Um, we've just recently opened our first office in um, Azerbaijan, which was uh, a challenge in itself because of the logistics and the licensing and the whole process. But I must say, we are now having a very successful business there and we're being well supported uh, by the government. Being in Azerbaijan, we are now looking at the likes of Turkmenistan, where we have relationships with through um, some of the charitable organizations in Dubai, and we're certainly looking at places like Kyrgyzstan, uh, and uh, we're also looking at now opening an office in Russia. I think my question is at the moment, we have seen the Arab Spring, and it's been quite serious, one of the reasons why we started to look into Central Asia. However, we've already seen some problems developing in Azerbaijan, with the youth, and the youth there and some disenfranchising of uh, the local population starting to feel a little bit envious that there are foreign companies coming in and perhaps they feel as if we're taking the wealth away and taking it back to our countries. Can I sort of ask, certainly maybe 
um, the Turkmenistan and maybe Madam President, do you feel that there is the potential for an Arab Spring within your own countries? That could be something that is a concern for me as a potential investor moving forward um, from our entry into Azerbaijan, which at the moment has been quite successful, but we still see that the Armenian problem is there and people are a little bit um, nervous about making further and further larger investments. Thank you. Um, this, who would like to, to, to answer this? Not, not the easiest question, actually, you're asking. You probably, you know, would like to some easier questions. It's, it's very complicated what you are talking about. Um, so, anyone? No, I would Please. Uh, Please stop about. Uh, we badly need investment, and we want to get uh, more investment, solid investment, fair investment, social responsible investment. This is very important. Uh, when people uh, there, they feel that uh, they'll benefit also from such investment. So, um, I think uh, what is uh, the most important, what we are doing, people, uh, they core, uh, participate in the governments. They are not just outsiders watching what uh, government is doing. They are judging also. They have their representatives in the parliament. If something wrong, immediately you get feedback from the Parliament's tribune. So I think uh, what we are doing, we are on the right track. Uh, we are open democracy, and uh, um, the most uh, serious debates now going within the Parliament, not on the streets. We are uh, open to all those challenges. and. Um, I'm sure that uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is only way to govern people. So we are not afraid of uh, big and uh, small size of uh, uprisings. Now, parliamentary governments, we do consider this is uh, quite uh, optimal, uh, uh, bearing in mind that uh, that was the historical uh, route uh, in my country also. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. I think um, we'll call it a day uh, with the feeling that uh, there are some achievements and a good hope for the region of Central Asia. Thank you very much, all of us, President. <laughs>